You know, I'm actually pretty good at this. At least Cassie always said that I was. Maybe she was just humoring me. Well, never heard her complain at any rate. All right. Let me have it, Doc. Come on. Uh, what are you doing? You said you wanted to give me a shot. I have to give you access, so, you know, anything to make sure that the baby is healthy and it stays right where it belongs. Rick. Wait. Wait. What? I can explain. No, you, you know, you did a really good job of that in court, Beth. A really good job. Okay, I know what I did was wrong. But, but I, I wasn't in my right mind. Philip had my little boy. He had my son, too, Beth. He had Harleys and Olivia's, but we didn't make any plans to help him get away, did we? We weren't trading our children for yours, were okay, we? Okay, you know something? That's not entirely true. You all made plans no, to meet it's, Philip. It's not the same thing no, you know. Rick, it. Rick, wait. Forget Just, it, forget it, forget it. There's absolutely no way that you can possibly justify what you did. No way. I pray it's you. <laughs> It's good to see you again, too, Libby. What do you want? I'm looking for Alan. Well, I guess he's a little busy. How's it going, Chief? How's Wait, the party? Shh. The judge just called us up to the stand. I don't know what this is about. No. I can't stay, so, um, we have Alan. Give me a call, Libby. Thanks. Going on. Why did uh, O'Neill call Gus as a witness? I don't know. Would everyone please take their seats? Court is still in session. We to prove. We'll see. What is it? It's bad, isn't it? There! Do you think this is funny, Dinah? What's wrong? I just think you're enjoying this a bit too much. What do you want me to do, freak out? Oh, come on, which side? It doesn't matter. All right, this is my better side. Come on. Fine. All right. Okay, 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 stop. You're not making me feel very comfortable about this. Well, perhaps I'm not that comfortable either, Donna. Perhaps I'd rather do this with Cassie. And you will. You will. Fine. Ready? Wait. Needles, they, they make me nauseous. And Cassie feel the same way. Okay, I'm not gonna look then. All right. Okay. Go. Well, I want you to take a deep breath. Okay. Hold it. I'm gonna count to five. All right. Ready? Go. One. Two, three, all done. <gasps> That's it? That's it. Oh, you're good. Thank you. I didn't even feel anything. Oh, oh God. <laughs> all right. Oh, what? I'm lightheaded. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Is there anything I can get for you? Yeah, some water. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? I think that you should call Cassie. Tell her about the baby. My bet is that she'll come racing back to you. No, I think I'm going to let Cassie cool off a bit. Give us the time to make sure you're pregnant before we go spread the news. Edmund, I am pregnant. I am for sure pregnant. Your child is in here. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. We are going to make a beautiful, beautiful baby. Just help me understand why you would do something like this to me. I wasn't I mean, to, thinking of... To think, to think that not only were you planning to run away with Philip, but you were going to take my son? 
and I was never going to see him again? Ricky, Help no. me understand that. That I would have tried to contact you. I, I would have tried to... Be honest, be honest. Did that thought ever cross your mind for a single moment when you went to go see Philip that night? Be honest with me. It wasn't a plan, Rick. It was, it was an act of it desperation. It was an act of the ongoing saga of Philip and Beth against the world. That's no. what it was. No, Do me it a wasn't. Favor. That's Do me a not favor. true. I don't want to talk to you again. You don't mean that. You don't There's mean... no way you can possibly smooth this over, Beth. There's no way. I mean, to think about all these talks that we had, all the support that we're giving each other. It was real. And to real. think that it wasn't, it wasn't honest or authentic for a single moment, Beth. Yes, Not a single moment, because you know why? You were keeping this incredible betrayal from me, and I'll never forgive you for that. No, Rick, you have to just, you just have to give me a chance, Rick. Rick, Rick, wait, Rick. That? Sebastian. Sebastian Hulse. Yeah. I know who you are. Excuse me, I need a minute. Okay. Anything I can do? No. Um, how about how about a ride? Uh-huh. I'm just gonna jump on the back of a motorcycle with a man I don't even know and ride off to God knows where, huh? Why not? Right about now that actually sounds like a pretty good idea. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Right on. Crazy year it's been for your family. Harley and Gus breaking up, your dad losing his job, and his girlfriend, Philip. Yeah, it's been a real banner year for the Coopers. All we can do is stick together. So much has happened. I can't even remember what I was doing a year ago. Oh, let me remind you. Romeo, Romeo. Oh, that's right. Was that just a year ago? Mm-hmm. Oh, I loved playing Juliet. I remember going crazy trying to get Joey to take any of it seriously. Oh, Joey Lupo. Good old Joey. Joey and Tammy. Marina and Shane. <laughs> Shane was good to me when I needed someone to trust. After that whole mess with Ben. What happened to you two? Best thing that could have happened to us. Really, I mean, we realized that we loved each other just not the way that we needed to to stay together. Last year, I thought Joey leaving was the worst thing that could ever happen. And Jonathan came along. Ugh, Jonathan. Every time I see him, I just want to punch him. I hate him. Well, you don't have to hate him on my account. Hey, what are friends for? You're okay now, all right? You know, I'm, I'm trying to take charge of my life rather than just let it happen to me, you know? Mm. That's very Psych 101 of you. Well, I need to find a place to live, and I'm worried about my mom, but other than that, I'm okay. I'm back in school. You have Sandy. Well, we're just starting out, but it's been fun. And even though we were roommates for a while, we're still just getting to know each other. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he got his life all figured out, you know? And I know he's crazy about you. You think? Mm. Listen to your friend Marina. She knows what she's talking about. It's okay. Everything, everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Why don't I believe you? Mr. Aitoro? Yeah. I'll explain everything. It'll be okay, sis. Why does he keep looking over here like that? Who knows? Well, it's creeping me out. Do you swear to tell the truth to so help you God? Yes, I do. Would you please state your full name? Gus Aitoro. I have a few questions for you, Mr. Aitoro. But we'll start with this. Your Honor, I have a photograph here. The clerk has already marked it as Exhibit 17. Enter Exhibit 17 into evidence. Is that you in the photograph? Yes or no? Yeah. And the gentleman in this photograph with you, that's Jack Webster, isn't it? The man who just testified on behalf of your client? Yeah, that's, uh, well... Yes or no? Yeah, Mr. that's, uh... Mm -hmm. That's him, right? 
Uh, this photograph, it was taken at night, wasn't it? Well, that would explain it. I mean, it's pretty dark. You and the witness. You and the witness, Jack Webster, in a parking garage, late at night with no one else around. It's uh, interesting. It's very interesting. I would really like to believe you're doing this for the right reasons. But you can't. Because Cassie and I have had such bad history. I mean, who would ever believe that I actually would carry her child out of the goodness of my heart, right? Exactly. Well, Edmund, I am not going to go back there. And I've got nine months to prove it to you. I really, really, really want to carry this baby for you. And after the baby's born? Well, the baby's yours. Yours and Cassie's. I understand that. I... I want to do this for you. There's not much I wouldn't do for you. You've got to know that by now. And there's nothing I wouldn't do for Cassie and the baby. But I'm sure you know that. Yeah. Is that a threat? It's a reminder, Dinah. As is... This. Yes. The 90-year warranty on a baby guaranteeing you and Cassie one baby without any interference from the factory. Exactly. Now, I'm going to get this over to the lawyer, and then I'm going to drop by the farmhouse and see if Cassie left any messages. Sure. But call me if you need anything. I think I'm going to get my shopping out of the way. Shopping? Yeah. I need a new wardrobe. There was a sale downtown at one of the maternity shops, so I thought I might go down, poke my head in, see if I can't get anything. Maternity clothes? Yeah, I gotta look good carrying your child, don't I? I'm going to be fine. Don't worry about me. Go! I'll be fine! Come on. Go. Right. No, I can't do this. I can't let you fend for yourself while you're carrying my child. I'm going to make a call. Thanks. I'll go get dressed. Mm. I, I can't do this. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Well, why don't you tell me? What were you thinking? You can't run away from your problems. Mm. You won't solve anything. Well, do you want to talk about it? Um, maybe I could help. Or maybe it's so hideous, I won't even want you on my bike. Too hideous for you, huh? <laughs> well, I do have a high threshold. So, Beth, what's up? I disappointed someone. A friend. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? What's that? How people tend to judge us for the shortcomings of our past as opposed to um, the potential of our future. Well put. Hmm. I should go. You sure you don't want that ride? Uh, we can stay the speed limit and I'll um, obey all the traffic lights. Maybe some other time. All right. Maybe. Deal. Are you going to say hi or just lurk there in the shadows? House tricks. I should be asking you that. <laughs> How long have you been there? Oh, I don't know. Just a while. So you saw uh, me with Beth? Everything okay? Mm hmm She was a little upset, so I offered her my ear. Mm-hmm. She's, um... She's an attractive woman. Of course she is. I just, uh... I just meant... I know what you meant. So, Marina, what's this I hear about you and Mr. Danny Santos, huh? I heard he's a good guy. Mwah. Thanks. What did I do for that? You actually said something civil about him, and I appreciate it. Huh. Hmm. Actually, I kind of sort of like him. Mm. I helped him find an apartment. Yeah? Oh, speaking of finding new homes, did uh, you and Tammy come up with any brilliant ideas? 
Her lousy roommate threw her out. Yeah, I heard. The jerk. Actually, I threw some ideas her way, but nothing stuck. Hey, you know, I really hate to leave the two of you alone and all, but I should probably go. Well, thank you for coming over and thank you for the suggestions. Anytime. I'm just chock full of ideas. <laughs> and you. 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 Thank you for being so nice about Danny. Well, hey, if he's nice and respectful to you, I like the guy. Thank you. Is that where you're going? No. Actually, I'm going to go head over and see what's happening with Harley's trial. Mm. Hopefully, she's getting the break she deserves. See you later. You recognize the garage you're in and the man you're speaking with, the witness who just gave your client an alibi, Jack Webster. That's a parking garage, you know, a public place. I could have passed him at any time, really. Your Honor, let the record show that the date time stamp on the photograph shows that it is 9 o'clock last night. I thought Gus was with you last night. Where did you go? Where did you go? Who are you with? What'd you do? Shut up! <laughs> Still sound like a cop. <laughs> So that's you, you and the witness in a parking garage just hours before court convened. I'm sorry, is it against the rules to go over a testimony of your own witness? Because I, I don't Late think... Late at night in a parking garage with no one else around. The, the guy's a night owl, what can I say? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Okay, thank you. We'll move on. Now, Mr. Webster knew that if he did not cooperate with you, that he risked the chance of going back to jail. Isn't that correct? The guy wanted a deal, he got a deal. But not until he passed a lie detector test. Yes, I remember. Mm -hmm. Then you also remember that he swore under oath that he saw Philip Spaulding alive after my client had left company. I mean, the needle doesn't lie, you know? When did you first learn about this story that purportedly clears your client of murder? I learned it when you did, O'Neill. Chief Cooper brought him into the courtroom. That was the first time? Uh, yeah. I believe, I believe it was. Thank you. Now, Mr. Arturo, before you studied law and joined the FBI, where did you live? Chicago. Chicago. You were a beat cop there, were That's you not? right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I want you to take a look at Exhibit 13 here, please. Okay. Could you Please tell us what that is. <clears throat> it's an arrest report. That's right, it's an arrest report from the Chicago Police Department. Now, could you please read for us who the suspect is on that arrest report? Sure. Mm -hmm. Jack Webster. Thank you. And now, please tell us who is the arresting officer on that report. <laughs> it's right there on page one, line six, yeah. Mr. Ritor. Answer the question, Captain. Uh, yeah, it's me. You knew Jack Webster before he came forward to save your client. Long before. What an incredible coincidence. You were Jack Webster's arresting officer. I arrested a lot of people. I had a quota. Like every other officer. Do you remember him? I don't. I don't. I, I don't know. I, look at the date on that thing. It's a long time ago. Your Honor, I would like to have this file marked next in order, please. People's Exhibit 17B. Now this is a file from the Chicago Police Department, if you would please. It's a personal profile on the witness, one that the arresting officer would be very familiar with. Now, Mr. Ituro, would you please read for us? the part that details Mr. Webster's uncanny ability to beat a lie detector test. We're particularly interested in the part that says that when he lies, the machine says he's telling the truth. Oh. Order. Order, please. Did you read this file when you were in Chicago? Did I read it? I don't know what I read back. You don't know. I May I remind you that you're under oath, Mr. Ituro? That has no relevance. Overruled. You threw up a Hail Mary, Gus, because you knew you were losing the objection, case. Objection, Judge. You, you tried to pull one over on us, didn't you? But it didn't work. Oh, objection. Uh, argument. I withdraw. You're excused. God, it's true. Everything he said is true. You think I'm upset because you were talking to Beth Rains? Are you? Don't be ridiculous. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I detected something in your tone, darling. Hmm. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You are 100% wrong. <clears throat> but I am curious about something you were saying. That we are all judged by our past. Yes. And now 
you, of all people, have a very unique take on remaking yourself. Well, so you're starting over as just a regular guy in little old Springfield. <laughs> you make it sound so Dullsville. You know what I would like? Hmm. To write a story about you. Get out. <laughs> yeah, to chronicle your efforts at starting over. Are you serious? Yeah. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. So, after everything we've been through, you don't want to turn around and run in the other direction? You want to get closer to me? Why not? Let's do some shopping. Maybe we can grab some lunch afterwards. Dinah, this is Louise Phipps. She works in the consulate. Louise, Dinah Marlar. Nice to meet you, Ms. Marlar. Pleasure. You can call me Dinah. Louise has been briefed on your situation. She knows how soon you may be expecting. And she's all prepared to take you shopping. What? Louise has a wonderful sense of style. She will prove invaluable as you look for a new wardrobe. Louise, be sure to charge everything to my account at the consulate. And don't forget that Dinah is a very close friend of the family. Cassie and I want to make sure she's taken care of as best as possible. Yes, indeedy. I'm their favorite charity case. Will you excuse me for a moment, Louise? Am I not shopping with you? Because Louise is much more helpful and efficient. Yes, she certainly looks efficient. Yes, well, I'll be going now. You must be very excited, Miss Marler. Have fun, ladies. Overjoyed. How would you go about doing this? I suppose you would interview me, ask questions. Mm -hmm. mm. That's part of it. But I'd have to watch you, you know going through the motions of your day-to-day -day existence. What's in it for me, Holly? What do you want? Hmm. How about... How about a little assistance? You want dirt on the Spaldings. Mm, not dirt. Um, maybe just a little info. You know, when you're dealing with people, it, it's always helpful to know what's kind of lurking right beneath the surface. Yes, yes, it certainly is. Louise, this looks like a spreadsheet on maternity stores. I figured out minutes per store based on square footage. Not much of a shopper, are you, Louise? <laughs> the car is waiting outside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, hold on for a moment. Louise, this, this is great. You've really put a lot of thought into this, but I... I'm just going to take it easy today. I'm not really feeling up for it. But when Ambassador Winslow schedules I'll an appointment... I'll be sure to tell Mr. Winslow that I'm not an appointment. But thank you for all of your time and your um, computer expertise. But I'm going to take it easy today and just, just have a rest. It's fine. We'll reschedule. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll call you. James and John. Pursuant to Article 21, Line 7 of our contract, said baby is to be delivered precisely at 12 noon to its biological parents, Edmund and Cassandra Winslow. John? Edmund? He hasn't eaten yet. We want to thank you for doing service to the Winslow family and present you with a small token of our appreciation. James? 
Note the inscription. A clock? Edmund, I don't want a clock. We enjoyed doing business with you. Ciao. This place is awesome. I'm moving in. I knew you would love it. So perfect. A tree house. Middle of town. The Cooper family diner used to be right over there. Hmm. Frank and Harley grew up in the apartment above the restaurant. But Marina told me they always wished that they could have grown up in a house. So Frank built this for Harley. It's still their secret hideaway. Hmm. That's a good story. I like small spaces. When I was a kid, I used to like to build these forts out of chairs and tablecloths. Or hide in closets. Mm. Small spaces make you feel protected. Must have been tough to move to that big palace in San Cristobal then. Well, it was. I asked him if I could have a small room. And Richard laughed at me. But he did find me the smallest room in the palace. He sounds like a cool dad. Was he? The best. He was the first guy to ever really make my mom and me feel safe. Mm -hmm. I feel safe now. Up here with you. Hey. Hi, Beth. Beth. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Sorry. Lizzie, James? They're fine. Good. You meeting Cassie? No, no. Cassie's out of town. I owe you an apology. An apology for what? When we were together, I was, um, I was pretty hard on you. Unforgiving. Well, there seems to be a lot of that going around these days. You just, you know, you were so extreme and you're reaction so reckless and, and I never understood that until now when Phil took James I lost it and I would have done anything and I do mean anything to get him back I understand I knew you would mm -hmm. <laughs> I just I love my kids and I, I couldn't imagine my life without them I can't imagine mine without Cassie you two have something very special together. A loser, I lose everything. Loser? Edmund, you and Cassie aren't having problems, are you? No. No, I just, I miss her. Well, not problems I can't handle at handle? any rate. Edmund, you... <laughs> That's funny. What? That is funny. No, I was just, I was just about to tell you not to do anything rash, but... Who am I to tell someone not to go too far? No. When it comes to love, the rules are meant to be broken. You be straight with me. Is Jeffrey telling the truth about Jack Webster? Did you arrest him in Chicago? Did you set this up? We were losing the case. Just answer the question. I'm not letting you go down for murder you didn't commit. Oh, my God. Oh, my I remember Jack Webster. And I knew exactly what would happen if he took a lie detector test. I remember because I recruited him. Only way that I could save you. Now listen to me. You can be angry at me or hate me or whatever. But we were losing this case and we are still standing now. We're still standing because of Webster. We have a chance now because of Webster. We have a chance. Do we? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
O'Neill, he did his little dog and pony show, but he couldn't even connect the dots. Your case is purely circumstantial. Do you understand me? We're going to beat this thing. The judge wants to speak with you. Just hang tough with me. What did he say? Harley, is it true? Sis! I, I don't know. I don't know. Shocking, isn't it? That uh, Gus would pull something like this. Maybe it's O'Neill pulling a fast one. I don't know about that, Bill. The evidence speaks pretty well for itself. I mean, uh, especially that photo of Webster and Gus taken in the garage. What I don't understand is how he could obtain something like that. I should have seen this coming. I should have done a background check. I should have asked the guy more questions. Hell, I'm the one that brought him into the courtroom. Dad, Dad, you wanted it to be true. We all wanted it to be true. Maybe, maybe it is true. I mean, there's all smoke and mirrors in there. Maybe that's... Where did this picture come from? in this. Did you see his face, Dad? He's guilty as hell. Jeffrey put separate facts up there. They don't necessarily add up, do they? They don't, Frank. He must have said something. He said to hang in there. That's what I'm going to do. It's me. Um, I want you to come home. I know we can work this out if you just... If you just come home. I miss you. I miss you, and I, I know you miss me too, I think, a little bit. Please, just... Just come home. And, uh... What is it? What's wrong? I'm sick. What is it? Is it the baby? I don't know. You know, I don't know what it is, but I just know that I need you. All right. Just hold on. Come on. Come with me. Thank you. We'll sit down the sofa. You okay? Mm -hmm. Just try to take it easy. Okay. All right. I'll get you some water. I'll put you down here. Thank you. Just lie back. Let me take care of you, Don, all right? Oh, did you solve all your problems yet? I hope you don't mind. Mind? I'm the one who told you to come up here if you ever needed to get a clearer view of things. Well, if it's okay with the Coopers, I'm moving in. Oh, great. Family party. So did you hear anything at court? Uh, I just left some messages, and I decided to come over here and wait for the good news. The way I see it, everything is going to be okay. Yeah. Tammy will find a new home. And Harley will come home. It's all good. You want to tell me what that is? I, um... Never really? mind, I'll tell you what it is. That is my wife trying to nail Harley Cooper to the wall. What's taking so damn long? Well, I hope Gus is calling some evidence into question. What are you talking about? 
He just admitted to meeting that guy. How can you call that into question? Hey, come on, we're gonna know in a few minutes. Give it a rest. Don't touch the really? Well, you know, it hardly would be in this courtroom if it wasn't for that bogus witness. Dad, she already agreed to cop a plea deal, so she wanted to spend the rest of her life in prison. He Frank! Might... Gus just took care of that. Don't go there now. Anything to get you anything? Some water? Gamble that Webster's testimony made a bigger impression on the jury than on his little file and picture show, okay? So I just told the judge that we're resting the case. You can't rest the case. Not until you put me on the stand.